Alright, we're back. Had uh, some F issues. Twitch acting up on me. Uh, looks like I got a follower. Freeze Hunters, three zeros. Thanks for the follow. Okay, so uh, start off. Uh, this is Wolf Tales. It's about uh, two wolf girls end up at her house after a blizzard. One's a princess, one's her guardian. And uh, you're kind of getting to know I'm going to pick which one uh, you like to date. Kind of a date simulator game. And uh, so far it looks like it's heading toward the uh, guardian. She's a little more feisty. The other one's a princess. Had some... Uh, scenes you could say already uh you can see those in the vods or, or you go to youtube uh they're saved there uh so uh let's pick up where we left off second to do some technical issues houston fix your problem In the days following my night together with Fui, I noticed a clear change in her behavior. While it's nothing as extreme as the night she crept in my bed, she definitely not her usual self. Every day she follows me around, acting like she has something she wants to say, yet never actually talking to me, like a little puppy. Uh, Fui also steals glances at my face whenever we're eating or watching television, and it seems like she's been clinging to Marari less and less every day. While I'm not, while I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for her behavior, the only event which ever comes to my mind is the night uh, Fui crept into my bed. Are you sure you've eaten enough, Fui? You usually eat three times this much. Hmm? Fui? Hmm? Oh, princess. I'm not actually hungry. I've already eaten my fill. Are you sure there's plenty left? Sigh. Back to ignoring me, huh? Fui continues to watch me out of the corner of her eyes as Morari sighs in expiration. You've changed Fui more in a couple of nights than I would have thought possible in a lifetime, Daddy. What did you do to her exactly? Nothing. Hey, don't look at me like that. If Fui's changed, it's her own doing. Well, perhaps so. But even then, something must have happened to make her want to change herself. Did you impregnate her? I almost spit out the contents of my mouth as Marari takes me completely by surprise. Impregnate? You mean impregnate Fui? Yes, did you? Of course not. Why not? Why? I sit back down and take a few deep breaths and try to calm down. Fui is a woman of age. She has not yet taken a mate, and she appears to have taken a liking to you. I can see no reason for you to turn down her advances. You make it all sound so simple. Is it not so simple? Uh, of course it isn't. I mean, Fui's just acting like this because she's in heat, right? What happens when she returns to normal and she realizes that she's throwing away something precious on the spur of the moment? 
So you're concerned that Fui will no longer desire you once her hormones have settled down. I wouldn't worry about that. Why shouldn't I? Of all the things weighing on my mind, that's that's a pretty big one. Smirking to herself, Marari turns to look at Fui. Following her eyes, I do the same thing. The moment I do, my eyes meet Fui's and she hurriedly looks away. I don't think you have anything to worry about. We don't just do it with whoever happens to be closest when our hormones flare up. If Fui has chosen you, then you can rest assured that her feelings will not change so easily. Our species mates for life, you know. Mm -hmm. Smiling from ear to ear, Marari happily clears the table as we all finish eating. While she's doing that, I look over at Fui, who once again turns away in a panic the moment our eyes meet. Even if Marari sees or says there's nothing to worry about, I really do something about Fui's behavior. I should... Uh, if she does like me, then I want her to at least be able to look me in the eye. And if she doesn't, then we need to clear up this misunderstanding as soon as possible. Either way, the two of us are due for a serious talk. She's pregnant. Despite resolving myself to speak to Fui, the day quickly passes by without me being able to talk to her at all. Every time I try to speak to her, Fui either ducks behind the couch, hides behind Morari, or leaves the room. I try uh, to approach her many times, but no matter what I do, she refuses to talk to me. Ha, so much for having a serious discussion. I guess I'll just have to wait until Fui has calmed down before I try talking to her. Giving up for the day, I return to my bed. As I go to walk through the door, however, I find someone standing in the way. Fui? Mm. Uh, yeah. Fui jumps in fright as I call her name. Fui, what are you doing out here? Is there something you'd like to talk to me about? Fui says nothing as she stares at me, but it seems like she wants to say something. Perhaps a bit more privacy is a good idea. Would you like to go for a walk? What? Fui opens her eyes and mouth wide as she stares at me in shock. The next moment, however... Mm. Yes, yes I would. To my surprise, Fui agrees to the walk. She brushes past me and out the door and quickly descends down the stairs. Better follow her. The air outside is crisp, but not to the point of being unpleasant. I figure I'm better off trying to talk to Fui out here. The outdoors seem to calm her. Feet red, yet smiling faintly, Fui walks in front of me. Without looking back at me even once, she sits at the edge of the stump, fidgeting relentlessly as she looks down at her fingers. I'll follow Fui over to the fallen tree, then take a seat next to her. Uh, Daddy... About the other night, uh, yes, Fui? What happened that night? It was all, um, um, you know, I only acted that because of my biology and, uh, you know, it, instincts, instincts made me do it or something. So don't go misunderstanding, okay? It's not as though I like you. I want to be with you, made or anything. Stammering uncontrollably, Fui eventually manages to squeeze out a few sentences. Still looking down at her lap, she plays with her fingers as she speaks, desperate to avoid eye contact at all costs. Uh, so, it was just a hormonal thing after all. Whew, it's a good thing we stopped where we did then. Relieved, but also a little disappointed, I smile to turn to Fui. That's what's been worrying you, huh? You thought I might take the other night's events the wrong way. Well, you can rest easy. I understand perfectly. You were just acting in accordance to your biological urges. Of course, you don't feel anything for me. You don't understand anything at all. Huh? Ooh, she's pissed. 
I said, you don't understand. It's not like some slave to my body, you know. I have my own thoughts and free will. I wouldn't do that with someone just because my body told me to, okay? Uh, no, I, I get that, but didn't you just say, oh, geez, forever, forget I said anything. Ooh, and she's off. This is why I can't stand you humans. Jumping to her feet in a huff, Fui begins to leave the area. Confused and also somewhat worried about her, I stand up and follow after her. Fui, I don't get your feeling temperamental at the moment, but... Ooh. Shut up. You don't know a damn thing about how I feel. How could a human ever understand what my kind goes through? Fui snaps at me the moment I catch up to her. Backing away defensively, Fui acts like a corner prey as she creates distance between us. No, it's not just you. Even the princess doesn't get it. None of you understand my feelings at all. Not even try to understand. Why isn't Mirai the only one that gets to be selfish? Why can't I take something for myself for once? Even here, away from the pack, I still can't have things my way. Before I realize that Fui's squabble, squabble with me has turned into an excuse for her to complain about her lot in life. Out in a forest with nobody but a single human being, Fui begins to vent her frustration. Why? Why is it always her? Why is it that no matter what I do, I always living in her shadow? Even now, when it's just the three of us, I'm still nothing compared to her. Fui, what are you talking about? I don't know what life was like with your pack, but in my cabin, the two of you are equal. Don't lie to me, Daddy. The princess got her, got here first. She made herself useful, enamorated herself with human culture. She even managed to steal your heart. Before I could so much as stake my claim, that girl took everything for herself my heart what are you trying to say Fui? you don't need to hide it i can see that you two look at each other she's the reason why you don't want to be with me isn't she what Fui, mirai and i don't have that kind of relationship like i believe that you two have probably been doing lewd things this entire time behind my back haven't you what? Have not. Mari's a nice girl and I, I don't like her, but... But what? But you're the only one with whom I've ever done something like that, Fui. Eh? Fui's anger dissipates in an instant replaced by confusion. For sure, before she can regain her senses and deny my words, I take a seat on a log, prompting Fui to do the same. She hesitates for a moment, then sits next to me, crossing her arms and did it. Lee. Fui, I'm sorry about what I said before, but I didn't do it for the reason you're thinking. Humans sigh. Humans aren't like half wolves in that way. We don't mate for life or want to have kids with people we barely know. Humans tend to spend years with one another before talking about that kind of stuff, and even then it rarely works out. That's why I don't want to enter into that kind of relationship on a whim, or as consequences of you going into heat. It's not you, Fui. I have done nothing wrong, and if I were a more irresponsible person, I would have happily taken advantage of you. But I, I, I'm not like that. Taken in by my words, Fui sits quietly next to me. Shh. When a dog farted, the man smells. I place my hands on Fui's head and speak to her in a soft tone of voice. With a gentle smile on my face, I look down at her fondly. Fui, I've been al alone for a long, long time. And just like that, I have no idea how to act around others. I closed off my heart, started pushing people away, and abandoned everyone and everything I could 
I've cared about, all to start a new life out here on my own. But you know, in the short time you and Marari have been here, you've shown me how impossible my goal was from the very beginning. I was wrong to think that I was better off alone. The time I've spent with the two of you have been the most fun I've had in years. And I think if you've opened your heart, if you've allowed someone else to see your true self for once instead of getting defensive, you might feel the same way. I mess up Furry's hair slightly with my hand, then remove my hand from her head and lean back. Even so, I don't know how hard it is to change. I also know what a big decision this is and how great of an effort it will have on your life. That's why I won't make any careless promises or leave you with a bunch of kids and then shrug it off like it isn't my problem. If you're serious about wanting a relationship with me, Fui, then you'll need to be patient. I need my partner to be someone who takes these matters as serious as I do and won't give up anything on a whim. I need someone who shares the same ideals as I do. Fui remains silent as she listens to my words. Other than expressing minor displeasure at having her hair ruffled, Fui remains attentive, barely changing her expression or breaking her concentration. When I've finished speaking, Fui looks away with a serious expression on her face, still clinging to a mediocum of defiance. It's only human. I already told you, I don't want anything like that from you. But you do, don't you? Hmm... I'm not talking to you anymore. Fui pouts and continues to avoid eye contact. I take that as Fui signaling that she needs some alone time to think about everything I've told her. All right, I understand. I'm going to head back inside now. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Fui. Wait, um, uh, uh. Fui hurriedly stops me as I begin to stand, but immediately realizes she has nothing in Pacific to stay. To say I, I don't mind if you want to stay a little longer and just for a little while and, and not to talk or anything we sit outside while Fui calms down the night air is becoming chilly and we have to go back inside shortly but for now I I'm content to just sit here with Fui surprisingly Fui speaks up first hey you're really able to make a go of it out here on your own I guess so even if someone like you can't make it I probably could too what are you saying Fui do you want to become a lone wolf I don't know I haven't even considered the option until now all my life I've been told to live for the pack and their rules to serve Marari's family but if someone had just told them that we didn't need to be like that Maybe things would be different. It would be okay. Don't you resent her? Do you resent her? Marari? No. She's just as much of a victim of circumstances as I am. She's been groomed from a young age to be the next PAX leader. Though seeing her refuse to go back to the PAC makes my blood boil. Fui is silent again before speaking up once more. Maybe I can even live here with you. That's the last thing I expected you to say. I thought you didn't like human society. You said anything about human society. I can rot for all I care. <coughs> I just meant that you're a lone wolf. You're living out here all on your own, with no pack indeed. Perhaps I could join you. That kind of defeats the lone wolf aspect. So, it's not like I'm asking you to be my mate or anything. I just mean if we were to live together as a cohabited thing. You know, as well as I do that humans and half-humans living together is taboo. I'm sure it's the same in your pack as well. We keep a wide berth with humans because you tend to treat us poorly. There's been too many stories about curious half-humans going into human cities and never being seen again. But if a human gained acceptance into the pack, contributed to the pack, then it, it wouldn't matter. It's so 
far you have been pretty kind. Perhaps not all humans are bad. Louis scratches her chin as she weighs in on her realization. Falling to myself, I decide it's time to head back to inside the cabin. Louis follows me quietly, mulling to herself. Even if our conversation didn't head in that direction I'd planned, it seems Fui is still is starting to become more honest with herself, if even on, only a little. At this rate, I think we'll be able to return to normal... What? In no time. A few days have passed since Fui and I had our nighttime discussion. Given time to process what was said, both girls gradually return to their usual cells, and we go back to how we were before our trip to the hot spring. Aside from the occasional sidelong glance, we've returned to our previous dynamic without incident. Come on, princess. What's taking so long? Just pick a movie and put it in. I need another minute. I've narrowed my choice down to two tapes. And I'm having a hard time deciding on one. So watch one tonight and one tomorrow. What's? It's not a big deal. Yeah, but uh, Daddy, can you watch both of these tonight? Uh, no, you pick one. Fui picks one. That's what we agreed on. Ah, oh, no fair. Morari sulks as she goes back to deciding which movie she wants to watch tonight. Sheesh, Morari's acting more and more human by the day. I was right to worry about the negative impact of having the girls stay here. They, they seem to be getting just a little bit too used to human culture. At the rate things are going, they really won't be able to reintegrate back into their pack. I leave the girls alone and walk into the kitchen. I then turn on the radio to listen for any changes in the weather and have and any plans to have the paths cleared. I enjoyed having these two here, but we really do need to get them home sooner rather than later. The later they stay, the more difficult it's going to be on all of us when they inevitably leave. After listening to the radio for a short while, I turn it off. I turn it back off. With a smile on my lips, I return to the living room. Ah oh, well, no use worrying about it while the path is still blocked. Once a clear route back to the girls' den has resurfaced, then we'll talk. Daddy, Daddy, I've reached a decision. You have? About returning home? Huh? Huh? Tonight, we'll watch the rest of the Grassland documentary. Then tomorrow, we'll watch this movie about the Man of Arn. Oh, you're talking about uh, what we were watching? All right, sounds good to me, though I didn't pick you for a fan of superheroes. Superheroes? Yeah, that second movie you picked. It's about a person with a suit of high-tech armor who goes around fighting bad guys. Oh, is that what it's about? I thought it was an education film about blacksmiths. Why even have something like that? Hmm, in that case, I'll pick something else. I'm not fond of violence. Alright, you go do crunch. Crunch. That. I look down at my feet and as I hear a crunching sound from below, when I raise my foot, I notice numerous crumbs of food on the rug. Where are you? I thought you already cleaned the living room today. Hmm? Yes, the food scraps on the floor. My apologies. I haven't yet stumbled. I haven't yet started to sweep those up. Sweep? You sweep them? Yes, I will start these. Sh I will start shortly, right after I have picked up another movie. No, no, no. You don't need to sweep up anything. With the rug, it will be too difficult. Have you heard of a vacuum cleaner? A vacuum cleaner. Sigh, uh, never mind. I'll be quicker to just show you how it works. Oh, here we go again. I head into the storeroom and find the vacuum cleaner tucked away in the back corner. 
After making sure it's fully charged, I bring it back into the living room, I turn it on, and brr. Yep. Arf, arf. You gotta be careful, that thing is. Morari walks backwards into the kitchen looking for a weapon to defend herself. Which? No, no, Morari, settle down. This machine is. Ah, another one. This one managed to get into the cabin. Quick, princess. Behind me. I'll take it out. Bowie. Please be careful. It already has Daddy cornered. Feels threatened. It might attack him. Not on my watch. Girls, come on. Not this again. I know the noise unsettled you, but it's just a machine. It won't hurt you. That's what you said about the last one, and it swallowed you whole. I'm not taking any chances with this one. I feel a little bad about deceiving the girls, but... Whoa! Daddy. Watch out, it's going out of control. Kaya. Princess. You fiend, get away from her. Ugh, that's a tough one. Please don't get any closer. The sight of women excites it. What? Fui turns bright red in the face. Contemptible beast. Get away from me. Don't worry, I've got this under control. Just a little more. Got it. Having cleaned the floor around where we usually eat, I turn the vacuum cleaner off. The moment I do, the noise stops and both wolf girls begin to relax. Is it dead? Careful, princess. It may be lulling us into a false sense of security. Allow me to investigate. Okay, be careful. Easy does it. Easy. Now. Hey, what are you... Stop that. Chomp. The moment Fui enters striking range, she lunges at the vacuum cleaner and sinks her teeth into it. Fui, stop that. You don't need to attack it. It's already dead, okay? Are you sure, Daddy? Uh, yes, I'm sure. Stop biting it, Fui. Obsessed. It didn't taste very good anyway. Of course it didn't. It's plastic. Putting herself on the back wall, enjoying praise from her princess, Fui leads... Morari into the next room. Meanwhile, I assess the damage to the vacuum cleaner, which thankfully isn't as bad as it seemed. But crying out loud, how many times do I have to tell those girls? Maybe I should just send them to the hot spring or something the next time I want to use the vacuum or the truck. I mean, in a way, I guess it's good they aren't completely used to life here. If they're going to rejoin their pack, then it's for the best that they don't get too comfortable here. But really, of all things, I wish they'd learn while they stay here not attacking appliances is a pretty big one. Grumbling to myself, I take the vacuum cleaner back to the storeroom and put it where I found it. Still, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad if the girls got used to life here. I mean, I do want what's best for them, and I'm certain that's what's best is for them to return their pack. But even so... If hypothetically they couldn't return to their pack, then it's not like it would be the end of the world. Afflicted, I return to the living room. Oh well, I guess it's a needless concern as long as the path is still blocked. Right now we're all stuck together, whether we like it or bang, bang, bang. Princess, princess, are you there? I followed your scent into this cabin. Please, princess, if you're there, answer me. A visitor for me? And that voice. Princess, it's someone from our pack. They found our way through the snow. Ah, yes, that, that, that must be it. Quickly, let us see to her at once. With a solemn look on her face, Marari walks over to the door. 
She then unlocks the door and begins to open it, at which point her facial expression changes immediately. Wolf girl. Princess. Oh my goodness. What what happened to you? What the trick over here truly so treacherous? When the girls open the door, what awaits them is another wolf girl. Unlike Marari and Fui, however, the girl before them appears to be heavily injured. No. Off. The path is clear. There's no problem there. Before the path was cleared, however, the injured girl looks at Marari in the eye as she speaks. Princess, your mother. My mother? What about my mother? Is she okay? Princess, the avalanche which occurred during your absence injured many of us, myself included. For every one of us injured by the avalanche, however, two more were killed. Among those killed by the avalanche was your mother. The queen is dead? No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. My deepest apologies, princess. There's no time for you to grieve. After your mother's passing, you were presumed dead as well. In light of that, a challenge was made for the throne. A challenge? Who would dare? One of the surviving hunters. He took advantage of the confusion and loss of life and declared himself the new alpha male. If you don't, don't hurry back, princess, he truly will become the new pack leader and take what is rightfully yours. The injured wolf girl barely remains standing, supported solely by desperation and anger. Princess, do you, do you hear that? We must leave at once. Mother, this is no time for mourning. If you wish to honor your mother's memory, then claim the throne. She left you. But, but I don't even want the throne. Those words which Rory can't say in front of her injured kin are transmitted to me directly as clear as day. What weighs on her mind is not the leadership of her pack, but the death of her beloved mother. Unfortunately, the other two wolf girls present are not about to give her the time to grieve. Princess, please, you must return and take the throne. Too many of us have already been killed or injured. What we need now more than ever is the stability of the world's family's leadership. I agree, Princess. We must, we do not return now. Who knows what fate will befall the pack? Take on the role left to you by your parents, Princess. Become our new leader. I understand what you're asking of me. I really do, but... Avoiding the gaze of the two insistent wolf girls, Maori looks to me for help. Staring at me pleadingly, she appears to be on the brink of tears as she seeks my advice. Unfortunately for Maori, I agree with her clansmen. You need to go, Marari. Daddy. This is your fight, Marari. This is for the future of your pack, with both of your parents died to protect. If you don't go, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. But I... I stand directly in front of Marari and smile as I look down at her. It's okay. I'll look after your friend here. When you're done sorting out your pack business, I'll still be right here, waiting to hear the good news. So leave, return to your pack. And then, when all this is over, if you still want to come back and see me, I will welcome you with open arms. I shift my gaze to Fui for a moment as I speak those final words. Fully averting her gaze, Fui tries her best to conceal the blush on her face as she attempts to retain her serious expression. Very well. Let us... Hang, hang on a second. I interrupt Marari mid-sentence, causing the wolf girls to look at me in surprise. 
I know I said that you should leave, but I didn't mean it right now. Stay here for tonight, eat well, sleep well, and prepare yourself for what you'll soon be facing. But I... I place my index over Marari's lips as she tries to protest. You've almost died twice in the short time we've known one another, Marari. Please, don't tempt fate a third time. Make whatever preparations you need to tonight, and then settle everything tomorrow. Would you do that for me, Marari? All right, I understand. If you're the one asking, Daddy, then I will do as you say. Now, hold on just a minute there. We don't have time to play around here any longer. Even now, our kin must be. You too, Fui. Eh? I placed my hand, which was resting on Marari's lips a moment ago, on Fui's shoulder. I know you feel like you need to go right this second without any delay, but please think about this for a second. Your friend needs urgent care, and Marari just learned of her mother's death. Do you really think that rushing head first into the action is the right thing to do? Well, that's... And of course, there's your own health to worry about as well, Fui. Mine? That's right. You're on the edge, surprised and feeling relentless. You're worried about your kin, but also about your friends right here. If you go out there while your head is muddled, you're only going to wind up getting hurt. And the last thing I want... It's for you to end up in the same state as your friend here. Daddy. While slightly redneck cheeks, Fui opens her eyes wide and stares at me. Uh -huh. Ah. Fui jumps in surprise as her injured friend suddenly clears her throat. Honestly, you too. You'd allow yourself to be charmed by a human male so easily. I'm disappointed in you both. Especially you, Fui. What happened to the cautious shoulder who despised humans and claimed that they weren't to be trusted? Has this human male truly tamed you in such a short amount of time? Ooh, we need to kick her ass. Marari and Fui look, uh, both look down at their feet as their friend chides them. The injured wolf uh, girl doesn't mince her words, nor does she display any joy on her face as she speaks. She truly is bewildered by the choice of her companion said the human may have a point our point is formidable if you go out there without a plan you'll likely wind up rushing to your deaths before you leave let me explain to you in depth what is going on and who you are up against for the next couple of hours the wolf girls talk to their friend while they're while treating her wounds Marari and Fui listen intently to the events that have transcribed during their absence. From the search for Marari to the avalanche and coop, all the drama is recounted for the sake of the two girls. Mother, I had no idea. While you were idling around here, our pack has been... Yes. Yes, I'm afraid things have been going well since your disappearance, princess. Most of the problems we now face are the result of recent weather conditions. But that is, as it may, the absence of your leader has naturally compounded the issue. I can't believe everyone fell to pieces the moment our leader perished. Functioning as a pack is great and all, but when did we all lose our sense of anatomy? It's because I wasn't there. If I had just stayed put. In this wooden owl, Marari and Fui lamp the state of their pet. With heavy hearts, they regret their absence in their pack's time of need and the consequences of their actions. Even if they weren't directly responsible for anything that has happened, they understood the impact of their decisions. The one who's been trying to take over, does he have the support of the pack? Not especially. However, in time, we were last a great number of our members, and everyone is frightened. A strong male presence is not to be underestimated.
The wolf type needs a leader now more than ever. If this matter is left alone, it won't be long before he gains the pack support. That is troublesome. When you say a strong male, do you mean... I mean that literally, yes. To be blunt, even if you both fought him at once, you wouldn't stand a chance. If you were able to defeat him in combat, you must come up with a solid strategy. Sit down, lure him into the thin ice, use weapons from this human's house, do whatever it takes. Is fighting really that only way? Even if we do defeat him, it won't bring back those who have already been killed. No, but it will secure your position as pack leader and restore the pack stability. Even so, don't worry, princess. You needn't lift a finger. I will take care of that traitor all by myself. Hui, I understand how you feel, but I don't think you should take this man on solo. In a battle to the death, one must have more than set of hands can easily sway the outcome. While the girls talk strategy, I head into the kitchen and start to make lunch. I try to focus on the tasks in hand, but for the most part, I can find myself deep in thought. Tormented by the reality of what my guests will soon face, I begin to feel like our time is finally about to come to an end. Having those two leave my home was supposed to be what I wanted from the very beginning. And yet, rather than see them off with a smile on my face as I should have stopped them. Why? Why didn't I do that? Ferrari and Fear are going to return their pack. They will be reunited with their friend and family and resume their day-to-day -day lives. I'd return to my life of solitude. I won't be able to take care of anyone else or show consideration for anyone else. I'll be able to live as I choose. This is what's best for everyone. I know it is. So what is it that I feel like I should get involved? As the day drags on, a solemn atmosphere fills the cabin. Louie desperately to protect Marari spends her time with their injured friend, thinking up ways to fight their common enemy. They look around the cabin for materials which to fashion traps, talk about ways to rally the other wolves, and at times seem to be taking the matter to, uh, quite seriously. Mirari, on the other hand, separates herself from the others and sulks on her own. No doubt haunted by the thoughts of her de deceased mother, she remains silent, not saying or doing a thing as she mourns all by herself. While the girls do as they see fit, I try to give them as much space as I can. Contrary to how I feel, I do realize this is a half-wolf matter and do, and not something which a human should get involved in. As much as it pains me to see the gentle, kind-hearted wolf girls in this state, I won't butt into their efforts. Hey, Daddy, can you come here for a second? Hmm? Sure, Fui, what's up? I was just wondering if we could borrow some rope and a couple pieces of wood to make a trap. That's right. Can't make traps without materials, you know. Make as much as you need. So? Huh? Was there anything else? Uh, uh, uh no. No, I just thought that maybe... Forget it. It's not important. I'll go back to planning now. Red in the face, she regretfully returns to her injured companion side, then shoots one more glance in my direction before returning to work. Huh? I thought Mirari was the only one really shaken by all this, but it seems Fui quite herself either. Maybe I should talk to the Fui once she's finished, planning everything out with her friend. It will likely be the last night under the same roof after all. I'd hate for anything important to be left unsaid. By the time Fui has finished making her preparations, night has already fallen. 
I start to cook dinner for the four of us, once again leaving the girls to their own devices. Surely enough, a short while later I hear the pitter-patter of stealthy footsteps behind me. I won't be ready for another 30 minutes, Fui. What? How did you... Or I wouldn't try to sneak up on me like that, or eat half-cooked food, for that matter. And the other girl's too uh, injured to sneak around so quietly, so I figured it couldn't be her. I turned my head as I dressed Fui. While doing so, I finally realized something. Say, where are those two? They're both gone in for a bath. Morari insisted that the wound should be cleaned properly, so it seems like they might be in there for a while. Hmm. Is that right? Well, whatever. I'm sure Morari could use a dis distraction right now. Yes, perhaps so. Returning to the task at hand, I turn away from Fui and continue chopping up the potatoes. Hey, Daddy. No, you you can't have any until it co it's cooked. That's that's not what I was going to ask. Suddenly, adopting a solemn tone of voice, Fui pinches the hem of my shirt. Daddy, uh, do you remember the night when I um imposed on you? You mean you, when you went into heat? Uh, well, no, uh, I wasn't. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. I, I, I know that it's, isn't something you can control. So what about it? If you come to you like that again, what would you do? I place the knife of my hand down on the chopping board, then turn around to face Fui properly. When I do, I realize that Fui's frigid, relentless, and her face is beet red. That's an unexpected question. I guess I could help you out again if you're okay with me being your partner. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, though. With an extra person here, it might be difficult to do that undetected. It doesn't have to be tonight. Mm -hmm. huh? I raise an eyebrow as I look down at Fui. But you're leaving tomorrow, aren't you? If not tonight, then... I'm going to return here, okay? And once the princess and I have done what we need to, I'm going to come back here, whether you want me here or not. We're going to do what we did last time. No, we're go even further. Because, you know, um, I've already chosen you. Chosen me? I don't understand. Chosen me for what? A uh, hubba hubba hubba. Ah, uh, jeez. Can't you figure it out for yourself? This is why I can't stand humans. Listen here, Daddy. Once the princess and I have fulfilled our duty, I'm coming straight back here and we'll continue this conversation. Dude, she's like borderline rapist, man. Till then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wait for me, okay? Before I can ask Fui to elaborate, she quietly slinks away. Fui returns to the couch a moment before her fellow wolf girls leave the bathroom, giving her a uh, mere opportunity to probe any further. Until this incident comes to an end, all I can do is speculate. That being said, perhaps I'll... I'd be better off waiting for Fui to just tell me herself. Right now, going off what she said to me, it almost sounds like she wants me to become her mate. Ah, you think? As the morning sun rises, the inhabitants in my cabin all wake up brightly and early. Following breakfast, some last minute planning and a few concerned comments from the only human present, we all meet in the living room one more time. I don't mean to rush you, princess, but if you're planning to lay traps before the confrontation, you best hurry. Time is of the essence. Your opportunity will not wait for you to gather your wits. Yes, I know. We will leave momentarily. Louis, are you prepared to leave? 
Yes, princess. I'm already whenever you are. So in that case, we will not dally any longer. Smiling resolutely, Marari turns to face me. Daddy. Yes, Marari? While it pains me to leave you like this, I promise that our parting will not be for long. The kindness you have shown me until now shall not be forgotten, nor will I ever regret the time we have spent together. As soon as I am able, I shall come back here to see you. Of course, of course, you're welcome any time. The same goes for you, Kui. Don't be a stranger. That goes without saying. We've already promised to meet again after everything is settled, didn't we? We sure did. Well then, if nothing more needs to be said, I believe it is time for us to head off. We will be back as soon as we are able. However, should the worst happen, don't finish that sentence. You're both going to be fine. In fact, I'm sure uh, you'll be back here pestering me in no time. I hope so. Bowing her head respectfully, Marari turns around with a smile on her face. Fui, carrying some supplies, I let the girls mimic Mar Marari's action and then follow straight after her. Marari opens the door, ushering Fui out first, then follows her out the snow, into the snow. A moment later, the door shut, and all at once, silence consumes the cabin once more. <gasps> freedom! Freedom, freedom. Left in the company of the injured wolf girl, I find myself pacing relentlessly around the cabin as time slowly passes by. Watching the clock, waiting for something to happen, praying that the girls will be okay. I can't bring myself to relax, or to focus on anything unrelated to the wolf girl's plight. All I can do is curse my own activity as I worry about my former guest. Damn it, why am I getting so worked up over this? The girls are going to be fine. They've been planning their attack carefully, and the traitor has no idea what they're coming for him. They have my map, some crude traps that they've made, and probably even the support of those who followed Marari's parents. This should all be a walk in the park. So why do I... Oh, for goodness sake, just go already. I must jump in surprise as my remaining guests suddenly pipe, piped up. Excuse me? You heard me. You've been pacing around with that worried look on your face ever since those two left. If you're just going to spend the entire time worrying about them, why don't you chase after them? They should still be setting up, assuming they've already arrived yet. If you hurry, you should be able to catch up to them. I shake my head and sigh. I can't do that. This is a half-wolf matter. A human like me shouldn't get involved. Oh, please. It's a little late to be saying that now. You've already involved whether you like it or not. The injured wolf girl sits up on the couch and looks directly into my eyes. I don't know what's gone on between the three of you in this cabin, but the smell of foremost coming from those girls is overwhelming. Even if they won't admit it, I'm sure that at least one of them has their eyes set on you. She's got more in her eyes set on me. As soon as you talk one of them as your mate, you'll be part of the pack anyways. My eyes open wide as the wolf girl's words begin to register. Despite my insistence that I'm unrelated to the pack business and that I should keep my nose out of their affairs, it seems the girls do not feel the same way. Take one of them as my mate. It couldn't be, it couldn't be, could it? What Fuyu was saying last night about her choosing me? No way. It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Why not end your suffering and go to after them? I'm sure they'll be happy to see you. Besides, the wolf girl's eyes suddenly narrow. They're going to need all the help they can get. They what? What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. We've made all our precautions we could in a short amount of time, but I doubt it. that'll be enough comes down to a direct confrontation between those two and the traitor, they will without a doubt be slaughtered. Slaughtered? No, but Marari, the rightful heir, isn't she? 
Surely he'll give up or the other members of the pack will help them. I wouldn't count on it. The second he sees the princess, he will kill her, no matter who is around to witness such an act. Our pack responds to strength above all else. When the princess cannot defeat a potential officer, she will not be accepted anyway. No way, I thought facing that guy was a lost resort, not a necessity. If those two have to fight him by themselves, then they'll be... Damn. Without another moment of thought, I run toward the storeroom and grab my axe. In response to the sudden action, the injured wolf girl smiles at me sincerely for the first time. Best of luck, human. Go and protect your mate, no matter what hardship lies in your wake. Oh, I'm gonna chop somebody up. Without sparing a moment to respond to the girl's words, I nod absent-minded and rush out of the living room. I jump into my truck, pacing my axe on my lap, and start the engine. Before the injured girl can react to the noise of the engine, I drive out into the snow, throwing caution to the wind as I follow the path Fui once led me down. Dun 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 dun. dun. Alright, this should be it. If I recall, the path is up here is... Where there was once a pile of snow blocking the path, there's now level ground. Whether someone cleared it out or nature has simply taken its course, I don't know. All I care about is the fact that I can keep driving right into the den of Fui and Morari. <coughs> Wait for me, girls. I'm coming. I continue to drive through the snow, no longer sure which direction I'm supposed to be heading. Heading... Uh, having never gone this far around the mountain before, I have no way of knowing if I'm heading towards the girl's den or in the complete opposite direction. Damn it. What did that map say again? Ugh, oh, I knew it. I should have kept in the truck. Just as frustration threatens to take over, I notice something in the distance. A few figures are moving around in the snow. Two of them are quickly circling one another, while the third takes distance. As I grow closer, I recognize two of the figures. Fui and Marari. And, and that, that that must be close to the axe uh, resting on my lap as I focus on the third party. Facing off against Fui is a large uh, creature, more wolf than man, easily several times her size. Fui is fighting but clearly tired against the giant towering over her. She doesn't stand a chance. Shit, shit, shit. Rather than slow down, I press my foot against the accelerator even harder than before. My truck increases in speed, threatening to spin out of control at any moment as I rapidly approach the target. Daddy. Fui, jump. What? Damn, ran over that motherfucker. Jumping out of the way just in time, Fui narrowly avoids being hit by my truck. Her opponent, however, is not so lucky. Shit, I'm losing control of the wheel. Damn it all. Without a moment to spare, I undo my seatbelt, grab my axe, and bail out of the truck. A few seconds later, the truck swerves off the side of the mountain, descending who knows how many miles before meeting its untimely demise. Daddy? Why? How did you... We'll talk later. Uh, it hit him pretty hard, but I don't think it'll be enough to kill that bastard. As if responding to my words, I feel a presence manifest behind me. I turn around, swing my axe wildly, hoping to nail the wolf in the head. Unfortunately, my luck appears to have run out. Rah! Human filth. Daddy. My axe strikes the wolf in what I assume to be his ribcage. Unfortunately, my attack only serves to enrage the beast. The next moment, he swipes his mighty claw sideways, ripping the axe from my hands. Before I can so much as reach for my weapon, the wolf pounces on me, pinning me to the ground. Die, human. Ugh. My eyes widen as the wolf raises its claw. Pinned to the ground with no hope ex of escape, I watch in terror as the lumbering razor-sharp appendage is swung down. With more weight and precision behind it than I could have dared to imagine, time to pierce to slow to a halt as death beckons to me all too soon. Get away from my mate. Ugh, stupid little... Come here. Ugh. Princess? You'll pay for that, traitor. The moment I resigned myself to death, I opened my eyes to find an unbelievable sight. 
Despite the differences in their size and the sheer hopelessness of our situation, Arari and Fury are desperately fighting off the, uh, the alpha male. You girls, what are you doing? You should have taken the opportunity to run away. They leave you here to die over my dead body. That's exactly my point. We're outmatched. There's no way we can win. But if you two had fled, you could have at least saved yourselves. You're one to talk. Why did you come here? You should have just stayed in your cabin and treated that girl. Why did you have to meddle in our affairs? Why? I rise to my feet, grabbing my axe as I leave. Isn't it obvious? I came to save my mate. Oh, rawr. The human again. Die, you miserable piece of whack. Grr. With the two wolf girls holding our opponent back, I land two clear heavy blows straight to the alpha male's head. That was a quick jump. It isn't enough to knock him unconscious, but the first time since the girls en engaged him, it appears he appears to be weakening. Unfortunately, his strength is still too much for the girls to bear. Two of them are tossed about as though they are weightless, using all their strength to merely hang off the wolf's limbs as he moves about. Pain spreads on the girls' faces. They won't match. They won't last much longer. You bastard! Take your hands off her. Whack! Ugh! You worthless! Whack! Ugh! I strike the wolf again and again, ignoring every warning my body gives me as I push myself far beyond my limits. My axe splitters, but remains in one piece, even uh, as it collides with the wolf's thick skull, it somehow avoids destruction. Only good for one more strike, I raise the axe over my head and put an end to the fight once and for all. <laughs> Barely able to stand, I limp over to the unconscious wolf, wolf's ridge, uh, ragged body. Building half a wooden axe, which is now only good for stabbing prey with the broken end, I bring my weapon to the wolf's face. Daddy, stop. Please, that, that, that's enough. The princess is right. Daddy. Daddy, lower your weapon. The pack will take care of the rest. Turning to face the girls, I reg regrettably drop my weapon. Even if I wanted to finish our opponent off, the truth is I don't, don't have the strength. Daddy, I can't believe you. How could you follow us here, even knowing what dangers might await? But it's the loss of blood, my overwhelming exhaustion, a rare chink in the wall around my heart. I respond thusly. How could I not come when my mate was in danger? Uh, you... What are you? Is it true that I said something like that, maybe in the heart of the moment? But that... You're the only one, Fui. I told you that already. Fui's face turns bright red as I make her remember the night she came to the news. You, you just... just for that? You came out here in search of me and fought that monster? You put your life in danger? How could you do something so reckless and stupid for a reason like that? Fury makes her way over to my side and immediately punches me in the chest. Idiot, you stupid, stupid human. I can't believe that. What kind of fool would you would do a thing like that for someone like me? You're so, so... Fui continues to strike me, but as tears begin to spill from her eyes, her punches seem to lose all strength. Before long, her punches stop completely. Instead, she tightly grabs the front of my shirt, quietly sobbing into my chest. Idiot, I hate you so much. I know, Fui, I know. Ending Fury's dishonest, I wrap my arms around her. No matter what she says, it is clear that, above all, what Fui feels is relief. Together we have fought and won. No amount of sass is going to change that. While their pack carts off, the alpha male, Mari, Fui, and I take our leave. We slowly trudge through the snow, heading back to my cabin with clear exhaustion and relief painted 
all over our faces. Finally, it's over. When we return to our cabin, Morari takes it upon herself to nurse her injured friend. She tells the injured girl of everything that happened, including the many embarrassing things that were said. Thankfully, by the time she gets to that point, I've already left the room. And so has Fuyu. Oh. Let's get it on. Uh, so here we go again. I'm going to ask this once just to make sure, but are you really okay with this? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Stupid daddy. Fui tries her best not to smile as she nervously walks over to my bed. Despite her words, I can see Fui's tail waggering as she walks, and the leering threat of a smile attempting to form on her lips. Fui, I don't know this is... Uh, I know this is hard for you, but you don't need to keep your guard raised around me anymore. That's no way to enter into a, like, a relationship. Re relation? What are you talking about? Who wants to be in a relationship with you? Well, you do, Fui. The moment I said the word relationship, your tail started waggering like crazy, and you finally broke in, out into a smile. No, no, that was... That was a mistake. My body's, um, you know... Honest? Ugh. Chucking to myself, I sit beside Fui. You know, Fui, I have no intention of forcing you to do anything. If you can say to me honestly that you have no desire to go any further than this, then I won't press the matter. But you know, I wrap my arm around Fui's waist, causing her to jump in fright. Despite her anxiety, however, Fui does not pull away from me. Fui, when you screamed out that wolf earlier, telling him to get away from my mate, I was overjoyed. Not only that, you immediately thrust yourself into danger, trying desperately to keep him from harming you. Your words may be harsh sometimes, Fui, but I can see how deeply you care for others. And of course, if you still make, you still take me, I would very much like to be one of those loved ones whom you hold dear. You are really reading too much into this. I was just trying to protect the princess, that's all. When I called you my mate, I wasn't thinking straight. It was the heart of the moment, and, uh, was it really? Ugh. Fui lets out a faint whimper as I draw my face closer to hers. Blushing furiously, she casts her gaze downward, desperately trying to avoid uh, making eye contact. You know, Fui... When I was speaking to your injured friend earlier, she told me that she was overwhelmed the moment she walked into this cabin. Apparently, either you or Mari has been excreting pheromones like crazy. Do you know anything about that? Further lowering her head, Fuyu hides her face the best she can. How would I know about something like that? I didn't smell any stupid humans' pheromones. Really? Yes, really. I see. I let out a sigh, after which a smile immediately forms on my face. If you can't smell them, then they must be yours after all, Fui. What? Fui raised her face, unveiling to me an expression of utter shock. How could that be possible? Why would I be releasing Pharaoh? Ha. Fui lets out a cute yelp as I place my hand on her thigh. Give up the act, Fui. You can't deceive your mate. There you go again, calling yourself my my mate so presently. You started it, Fui. It was only for a short while, but for a moment there, you finally showed me your honest side. Now, would you show it to me one more time? I place my free hand on Fui's face and guide her towards me, making her look me in the eye once more. I like you, Fui. I think that would uh, we have a lot in common despite our different upbringings. You who defends your heart desperately and me, a loner who once abandoned everyone and everything he held dear. Maybe it's because we're both taking similar paths in life. But I feel that in the short time we've been together, we've been 
grown closer than I thought I'd ever become with someone else ever again. Still holding Fui's cheek in my hand, I fully begin my slowly bring my face closer to hers. Fui, I, I want to stay with you, whether it's here in this cabin, back in the in your den, or anywhere else. At the same time, I have no intention of living with someone who doesn't return my feelings, much less starting a family with them. So I'm leaving the choice up to you. If you're willing to take a chance on me and open your heart for once, then I will do the same. If not, all you have to do is leave, and I won't pursue this matter any further. We remain silent for a while. Neither speaking nor getting up to leave, she sits in one spot, unmoving, staring into my eyes. Seeing this, I don't try to rush her. This is an important decision. It isn't one that people like us can make easily. Whatever conclusion she comes to, I will honor it. Daddy, uh, I, I like you too. You do? Nod. I don't know about, you know, cooking or cleaning or having children or any of that stuff the princess has studied, but if you're sure about this, about me, then I bring my face closer and plant a short, soft kiss on Fuji's cheek. I'm sure. Then, Fuji goes to turn away, then stops herself. As hard as this is for her, she tries her best to continue making contact, eye contact with me. Daddy, uh, like I said, I don't really know about this stuff, so if you would, you know, yeah, I understand. Leave it all to me. ka -ching. Kissing Fui once more, this time on the lips, I gently lower her body onto the bed. Positioning myself above her, I kiss her over and over again, taking my time as Fui gradually adjusts herself to the situation. Okay, no matter how long I wait, however, Fui's heart rate does not slow down. Neither does mine. Fui tells me if I'm going too fast or if I hurt you or anything, okay? I've never done this before either, so I might make a few mistakes. During my confusion, a look of joy appears on Fui's face. Knowing that this is my first time too, Fui is finally able to calm down, if only slightly. Yeah, I understand. Just be gentle, okay? Without saying a word, I nod my head and kiss Fui on the lips one more time. Mutually confirming our feelings for one another, we fall back into the bed in a passionate embrace. We spend the night together lost in each other. In the time since Fui and I first became intimate, our daily lives have undergone a number of drastic changes. With the blessing of the new pack leader, Marari, as well as Fui's parents, the two of us have been staying primarily in my cabin. We've been living alone in the cabin together while routinely visiting the pack, mostly for the sake of supporting Marari and her new role. <coughs> as time has marched on, however, we found ourselves returning to the pack less and less. Not because we're severed ties with them, if, if anything, my place within the pack has only grown stronger as time has grown on. Rather, the reason why we've been moving about less frequently lately is one in which Marari and Fui's parents understand and supposed to support wholeheartedly. Namely, regrets. Wolf kid. To raise our children. Ooh, I guess I got a good ending. Hey, hey, there's no need for that. Look, there's plenty for everyone, okay? Err. I said stop that. If you two start fighting again, so help me out. Whoa, 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 easy there, you three. What seems to be the problem here? <clears throat> Dear. They're fighting over breakfast again. Seriously, I thought I made enough for everyone. You did. It isn't the quality that matters. They each want what the other one has. She's, aren't they a tiny bit too young for sibling rivalry? They can't even talk yet. They shouldn't be fighting. Tell me about it. Fui picks up two of our cubs, one in each hand, in order to separate them. Now you two listen up. If you don't stop fighting, Mama isn't going to feed either one of you. 
A slighter, tender, loving tone of voice whose threat is, is both real and terrifying. What kind of mother threatens to feed her children? Contrary to our words, I know that Fuyi won't do anything to harm our children. She's been enamored with them from the moment she found out she was pregnant, and that love has only continued to grow ever since. No matter how much chaos they cause and how much many sleepless nights they give us, they are still our beloved children, and we wouldn't trade this life away for anything. What is it, Fui? I love you, Daddy. Heart filled with warmth, I gently kiss her forehead. I love you, too. Mm. Oh, we are done with that. That was different. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, now I'm going to move on to first-person shooters again. Need to blow some heads off. I'm thinking Borderlands 2, Apex Legend. I got to clear my mind of this. The blood, violence. Let's go back to that. All right. 